Hello everyone, my name is Ryan, back again with Summit Hydraulics. Today we're going to be doing a electric rear remote kit install on a L4701 Kubota. Once again, this machine was donated to us for the installation video today by Southwest Tractor and Equipment. If you guys need any tractors, trailers, implements, or more, please take a look at them. There's a link for them in our bio below. Uh, without further ado, let's get into this. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check our parts list, make sure all of our components are here. Um, we have everything that we need to make this an easy and clean install. So I'm just gonna go through our parts list, make sure we have all of our items, and then we will go ahead and start assembling everything together. Okay, so at this point I've installed the hydraulic adapters, the plugs, and the hose fittings on this side onto the manifold. I've gone ahead and attached the couplings, tightened those down, and I have it fastened to the bracket. And what I've done is I've left two of the bolts in it to be able to kind of manipulate this bracket. This is the clamp bracket that will clamp onto the rocks. And this will make it a little bit easier to install. Um, so I only really have to deal with two bolts when I get this thing uh, up on the, on the ROPS and I go to put the last two bolts in. I'll just start those two bolts and then I can just continue to, to tighten it down and clamp it to the ROPS. So that is our next step. We'll go ahead and get this thing up on the ROPS and we will get it clamped on and fastened. All right, just finishing off, tightening up this last bolt. We now have the clamp bracket fastened to the ROPS. I just have these bolts that are holding the spools in kind of started, so we'll go ahead and finish those off now. Get those all tightened down. Make sure I got them all tight. Apparently, apparently I went pretty good with most of these. So these are all tight. We've got the spools secured onto the block. We've got the bracket secured to the ROPS. Now we will run the work lines as well as the pressure and the tank lines. So here we are taking a look at this loader valve. On this side that is marked green is where we're gonna tie in the third function valve from. So we will take this hose off here 
um, install the hose that comes with the kit attached to this port on the loader valve and we will run that to the T port on the summit valve. So here we're going to start the switch box control uh, section of the installation. The first thing we're going to do is attach this clamp bracket to the right side of the ROPS. If you're looking from the rear of the machine or you're sitting in the seat, this is going to be on your right hand side. Um, this kit is pretty ambidextrous. If you wanted to switch this around, you could put the valve on the right side and the switch box on the left side if you prefer. In this case, we're going to we're going to go ahead and put the switch on the right and mount the valve on the left. Um, there again, similar to the way that I started the bracket for the valve, I've started the two bolts on the rear side of this just to get it started and it'll make it easier for, uh, for me to clamp this directly to the ROPS. So we're going to go ahead and get this clamped onto the ROPS and then I will continue on from there and attach the switch box uh, to this bracket. All right, now we'll fasten the rocker box to the bracket. And lastly, we will fasten our rocker box bracket to the ROPS bracket that is clamped onto the ROPS. All right, at this point, we're going to install the mid-mount bracket along with our quick disconnects that connect to our A and B work lines. These are the two lines that route up to uh, the front of the machine for the implement to connect to. So what we're gonna do first is we will install our bulkheads. Always remember that the short side of this bulkhead adapter is the side that accepts the O-ring that will take the male quick disconnects. Do that on both sides. We'll get this all snugged up in the vise and then we will attach it to the mid-mount bracket. Okay, now we can start installing our hoses. All right, here we're just gonna go ahead and tighten up the pressure in the tank line. I'm gonna make sure that these connections are fastened good so we don't have any leaking. There again, these are JIC fittings. So like I've said in the past, um, the rule of thumb with these is to hand tighten as far as you can, and then a quarter to a half turn with a wrench. These are metal to metal seals, no Teflon tape, no thread sealant or anything like that is needed. Um, I did already route the lines to the front before um, finishing these off and tightening these down. So we'll get a good shot of how I have these routed. I just kind of routed them back underneath a crossbar behind the seat, which is out of, out of frame right now, but you'll be able to see that in a moment. Just kind of routed those back behind this crossbar and I zip tied them up really nice and neat and kind of followed the contour of that bar as I, as I routed them along it. So um, we have those all installed. I, um, I'm gonna install the A and B work lines. I'm gonna route those kind of the same routing as I did with these two lines up against them. We'll go down uh, inside the, the inner fender well here and we'll route those to the front and connect to those to the uh, front coupler, or excuse me, the mid-mount bracket as well. This is HS069, hose number 12 in your parts list. This is connected to the P port on the summit valve and this runs up to the factory Kubota mid-mount bracket on the orange side, which is feeding pressure. Uh, this is your tank line on the summit valve. This hose is HS075, which is hose number 11 in your parts list. 
connected to the T-port on the summit valve. This runs up to the loader valve itself and connects to the orange side of the loader valve. Um, if you're sitting in the seat, this is gonna be the port on the left side if you're looking up, down, up at the, the loader valve and it will have an orange dot on it, basically designating that that's the pressure port on the loader valve for Power Beyond. So we're gonna, we have uh, coming out a P port on the summit valve, going to the mid-mount bracket, the factory Kubota mid-mount bracket on the right side with the orange dot. We come out of the T port on the summit valve with HS075, hose number 11. This connects to the loader valve left side if you're sitting on the on the seat, which is the Power Beyond port on the loader valve. Okay, so here we're running the A and B work lines. Uh, we've installed these two 90 degree adapters here. Two A, B work lines will attach to those 90s. We'll route those up to the front. These will connect to the mid-mount bracket. And then there is another set of hoses that run from the mid-mount bracket up the loader arm and terminate on the torsion bar quick coupler bracket at the front of the machine that a grapple would connect to. So we'll go ahead and tighten these up. Those are good. Now from here, we will just route these hoses with the same routing that I did the A and B work lines, kind of try and keep everything clean and neat and together. All right, now we've got our hoses routed. We will go ahead and attach our AB work lines that run up to the front quick coupler bracket on the cross beam. This one will go right here. And the black one on the opposite side. Next thing we're gonna do is remove this rubber handle and then we will install the two button joystick onto this lever. So take this off. And then our joystick has a series of sleeves inside. For this instance, we'll just remove one of those sleeves. Joystick goes on. And then of course you have four set screws that will fasten this lever or this joystick to the lever. Then tighten these down. We can start the process of connecting the wiring harness. Just get our solenoid connectors all plugged in so our switches will work. These pairs of wires do come in different lengths. The shorter ones connect to the lower, the lower coils and the longer ones as you go up, the longer one, the longest one will be on the top, the shortest one on the bottom. But there we go, we got our coils all plugged in, our switches are active now and we're ready to go. All right, you can see what we've done here as we've connected the wiring to the battery here. I did find that removing the two screws for the air filter and just kind of moving this out of the way to prop it up, give you a lot more room. So I would certainly recommend removing those two screws and just kind of pushing that air filter towards the top of the radiator and resting it there when you're doing this wiring. It makes it so much easier. Uh, and then as far as routing goes, it's kind of up to you, similar to the hoses. Uh, however you're comfortable, I came out down and around there is a, this bar right here. I came back behind this bar and then just kind of went up through the engine compartment all the way to the front. And then uh, I wired, I ran the wiring through the rubber boot on the joystick for the loader valve, which we will show you, we will show you some uh, footage of that as well. All right, you can see here how we just routed this, this wire down through this rubber boot. Um, there was some extra wire. They make these harnesses a little bit longer um, just in case, depending on how you want to route it. But uh, I did take a couple, uh, maybe a foot or so of extra wire and I bundled that up and I zip tied that up underneath the loader valve, which uh, we'll show you a shot of that as well. Okay, you can kind of see what I've done here is like I said, I just kind of bundled this up and put a couple zip ties on it. 
may be tough to see from where we're looking at it, but there was a hole in this plate for the loader valve and I was able to feed a zip tie through that hole and come around and fasten that right up against that plate there. Um, and then you'll notice the wiring that runs to the battery here. I've kind of ran this down back behind this filter here and just up against the motor. There's some other wires that are loomed here and hoses and such. I just kind of followed those all the ways to the front of the machine and kept it tucked up in there. I know it's probably hard to see there, but you know, like I said, it's it's kind of how you're comfortable doing it. This is this is how I saw it might be the best routing for it. But if you're not comfortable doing it this way, you can do it however you like. Uh, but that is how we that's how I ran the wiring up to the front. All right, there we have it. The front and rear combination unit is all installed and ready to go. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please go ahead and follow us in the bio below. That way you can look forward to us releasing more content on installation videos, troubleshooting, and more. Thank you for your time. We'll see you next time.